Welcome to HeCast, the official podcast of He Changed It. My name is Mike Chisholm. As always, I'm happy to be hosting this amazing program, talking to amazing people about amazing stories. Uh, some, some are up, some are down, some are heart-wrenching, some make you think, and hopefully some entertain a little bit. Um, it's been a lot of fun watching uh, all the things go on. I sound like a broken record. I know if you listen to two or three of these in a row, you're going to hear me saying the same thing over and over. It's it's so much fun watching this company grow, watching what uh, what my wife and her partners are doing, watching the reaction from all sorts of different people, um, more more Canadian national, uh, national stuff going on, meeting with members of parliament and things like that in the background. Lots of cool things. Um, Stuff that I wish I could announce right now, but I can't. But I will say this, download He Changed It. Go to either the app stores, download it, sign up, get it going. Uh, the podcast here, if you're enjoying the podcast here that we're doing, please share, please subscribe. And uh, let's let's help some guys out. Speaking of which, the gentleman that we are going to have on today um, is, a, is, in my mind, a guy who... If, if, if there were, you know, you listen to that, I think it was, a, it's a wonderful life that, that they rang a bell and every time they rang a bell, an angel got its wings, something like that. Um, this guy is kind of like that to me. This is one of those guys who, who has, uh, he has a breadth of experience um, that, that I, 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 I look at it and I, and I, and I hear some of these stories um, of, of what he has done and what he has seen and who he has helped and how he's helped them. And um I'm blown away by it because this is a guy who has helped some of the people, some people that are at real low points in their lives. And at the same time, he himself has a story. Um, and let's not face it. One story, many stories of life experience um, that he can, he can use to help others. And he does use to help others. And he's at a bit of a crossroads in his life right now. So I don't even know what the hell to call him right now at this point, but Don Bredisher, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it so much. And uh, I hope that I'm not exploiting our friendship by having you on here and telling some of your stories, man. <laughs> Mike, honestly, the chance to come on and just speak to you like this is absolutely my pleasure. I can't even tell you how excited I am to just sit and chat about anything like this. I'm I'm very grateful that you are so uh, so humble in that. Um, I want to go back to the job that you were doing when I first met you. Um, you were working with very would you call them at risk people is that the is that the is that the term we use what do, what do we use with when with the people that you were to de- describe a little bit about what it is that you would 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 do in a day's work <laughs> oh man a day's work that changes every day um <laughs> it was a high risk demographic um people who are had massive mental health issues highly addictive to generally methamphetamines and alcohol. Fentanyl started playing a role later on um, and just trying to get them to have one more day. The weird thing, the weird thing when you're dealing with that demographic is all you want for that one person to, is to have one good day. That's it. Tomorrow, there's a chance they'll be overdosed, um, in a hospital, they would have gotten mugged, robbed, hurt really badly on the street. Yeah. And I dealt with high-risk youth. I dealt with um, the Indigenous trauma centers. Yeah. And it was, it, it, was, it was intense. There's no other word for it. I, I don't even think there's an English word for how intense it was. Wow. Uh, so, so... <laughs> Take us before you do this. So, uh, you, would you would you have called yourself a counselor? Is that what you would have been at that point? Like, what was your title? Uh, addictions counselor and mental health. Okay, addictions counselor, mental health. What was the job that you were doing directly before you became that and started working with those people? <laughs> uh, business development and marketing specialist. Okay, so you're a marketing specialist, you know, kind of white collar guy, white collar, white collar stuff, big stuff. Um, and then suddenly, is it suddenly or do you go it, through it, a transition? Like, how did that happen? <laughs> um, truthfully, I went through a horrible divorce. Yeah. Uh, didn't know what to do to date. And I've been divorced for nine years. 
papers. Yeah. I still haven't read my divorce papers. I signed them. I still haven't read them. So I'm going through all this and I'm going through some bad stuff. And I went through a time in my life where I actually drove down to where I got my photos for our wedding. And I sat there in the parking lot yeah. and I put a, honestly, I put a knife to my wrist and it took 300 stitches to close it up. And after that, I'm like, okay, something, something's not okay. I need to figure this out. I need to figure this out for me. I need to sort of go back to some place that I've never been. So I've been very, very white collar all my life. Yeah. So I want to see, you know, I felt like I'd lost everything. And I wanted to really, really see what losing everything looked like. So I went into the inner city. I lived in the inner city. I became friends with gangsters and prostitutes and heroin addicts. Very close friends, actually. Yeah. I want to, to look at mental health. I want to look at addiction. I want to look at aggression and anger and fear and suicide. I want to look at it right from the inside. And I spent five years looking at all of that from the inside. The, um, and I mean, you know, uh, I, I don't want to in any way, shape or form lighten the mood or lighten what these people are going through. Um, at the same time, you know, there were some days where I would ask you, hey, man, how was your day today? And you'd be like, and I mean, I can't even do it justice because, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, I'm not exaggerating. I, oh, you know, dealt with a couple uh, overdoses, dealt with this one guy who tried to come at me with a knife. It, 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 like you you just you went through the, some of the, the, the shit that you would talk about in a normal day was astounding to 90 percent of people out there have would never even fathom this kind of stuff. And you intentionally turned the car around and said, you know what, I'm driving right to those people. And, and, and you talking about, you know, the idea of, of you going through a really rough divorce uh, that included, you know, a little bit of help, potential self-harm there for you a lot. In fact, I'm, I'm minimizing the story and I shouldn't really, um, you know, you were in a really, really hard place. Um, and, and you, you drove into that lifestyle and that culture, I guess culture might be the best word for it, actually. Um, what do you think you, uh, what did you learn the most from doing that? Oh, at first I did it because I, in my head, I kept telling myself, I want to help people. I want to help people. And now after years and I've taken six months off, completely yep. of everything and looking back on it it's I, I just want to help myself and i want to learn how to help myself and that was the big part is learning right and so any anything i took from them i, I gave everything to yeah. that demographic that industry i Absolutely. gave everything yep but they gave me so much more because now every morning, if, if I've had a bad day, yeah, it's like I wake up, and I'm like, okay, hey, today's actually not that bad. I got a great place. I'm pretty happy with myself. I'm healthy. I've got some fantastic friends like Mike. I'm going to pump your tires right now, <laughs> Mike. And things are good. So even though I, I wanted to learn so much about that, yeah. The only thing I really learned was about myself, which was an amazing journey. Well, and 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 it's it in some ways it's a microcosm of what um, of what the team with He Changed It is doing is is trying to um, to create opportunities where men can do that. And they can do that through helping others and they can get helped through that process and be helped through that process as well. Mm. Um so, so I think, I think we, uh, from a culture of, of what this company, what this podcast and all of these conversations that we have, um, I think that's a, a theme that has definitely 
um, emerged a lot is when you're going through something, helping other people, maybe going through the same thing. That that's that's kind of therapy right there, isn't it? Isn't that kind of like the, um, you know, there's 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 official therapy, official programs put on by official groups and things, but then there's also just friends that help each other too. And uh, it seems like you were going through something that was catastrophic to your mental health, so you thrust yourself into this world, and that gave you perspective kind of for the rest of your life. So you, you did it for five years. Five years total. Wow. Um, I'm out of it completely as far as that demographic goes. Right. Out of helping, I'm not out of it. I, right. I've just changed my lanes. Yeah, you're not working with the uh, with that at risk quote unquote population anymore. You're 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 kind of away from. If you were on the fringe working when you were working with them, you've 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 significantly come inland from the fringe. Completely, and uh, I a lot of it is almost serendipitous, where you know I, I forced myself to do something that was at the time crazy. You know, I. I it was like, like when I say crazy, it's not even just working with the at-risk people. Um, I put on goggles for a month, blinded myself to see what it was like to be blind for a month. I couldn't even see because I wanted, I felt like I'd lost something so yeah. catastrophic that my life was destroyed. And then one day I'm like, well, what, what really does it feel like to lose something? So I'm like, I don't know. Let's give away all my possessions. Let's go blind and let's see what it's like to actually lose something. <laughs> wow. And I did this all in the course of about five years. So, and I want to that, feel everything. That line of thinking right there, I got to stop you right there just to ask this question. Is that something that, you know, Dawn at 15, 16 years old would do? Or, or were you literally the guy who listened to what everybody said, education, get a good job, you know, in the white collar sector, that sort of thing. And then you had a breaking point or were there times in your life looking back where that was, that was Dawn's behavior? No, man, looking back, it's probably Dawn's behavior. I've been all about, I was anti-establishment from a very young age okay uh a great story if we have time for it we have time we have time for any of your stories <laughs> i'm going to tell you that in grade I, it was either one or two i was in a strict roman catholic school nuns and everything like bashing your fingers with rulers if you weren't writing correctly like hardcore yep and they called my parents in this one day and this is, I'm paraphrasing because, of course, I don't remember. But like, mm. well, we, we think your son is retarded. Yeah. And my parents are like, what? Like, well, honestly, like, you know, according to the churches and the nuns, he's retarded. Yep. Turns out I have this high, high amount of energy. Mm -hmm. And I was 90% deaf in both ears. <laughs> wow. And I also don't like authority. So I bounce around the room and I still bounce. I'm a six foot one chihuahua. I just shake and vibrate all the time. Just hop all over the place. So no, I, I, I don't think it's something new, Mike. This is, this is something that are, it's very ingrained in me. And I, I want to feel, I want to experience everything. Um, I've felt and experienced like the pretty crummy stuff. Mm -hmm. and, it sort of turned a corner where I, I want to feel some different stuff, you know, spirituality, love. I, it's a weird thing to say, but I love love. Like that's straight out of like a chick flick. Dude, that's, that's, that's not a weird thing. I love love too. It's one of my favorite things in the world. So yeah, it's, it, it's about experience. And if I have to buck a establishment for a little bit. Yeah. Just to get my feelings, I'll buck it. And I, I hope other people do because pushing towards what you want is crazy important for a person. Because what you want is not what the next person tells you what you want. Yeah, I think it's like everybody tells you what you need. Yeah. You're hitting on a major key there. Yeah. 
you're hitting on a major key there because I think so many of us, um, and I've had I had a, a men's a couple of men's coach coaches on and and things uh, over the past little while here. And one of the things that came up was the idea that many people they spend a lot of time, many men spend a lot of time working on what they're told is important versus doing the introspective dive to say to figure out for themselves what's important, you know. And, and, and for like a, for a nonconformist that's been told to conform, that must've been very difficult for you at times in your life. Was it, was it part of, was the conform versus nonconform part of the reason that your, your, uh, your first marriage collapsed? Yeah. Great question. Like straight to the heart. Great question. <laughs> um, my, my marriage, that lady awesome lady very good i have nothing bad to say her but her great mom um but she never saw things quite like i saw she was very go to work monday to friday nine to five for 50 years you retire you take one cruise a year yep and that's sort of it yep. and i just i wasn't that guy and i sort of kept pushing back kept pushing back and at one point she said to me, you know what? You're, you're just not fun anymore. You're not fun for me. Mm. And I was like, well, but this, this is right now who I am. And that, that was the end of it. Like, there, there was no grandiose scheme there. We weren't cheating on each other. We didn't have children with other people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't some crazy breakup. It was just all of a sudden we realized who we are. And after years and years and years of trying to make it work, at one point, we just said, it, it's not. Mm -hmm. And we, that said, we did get married too young. I was 19 when yep. we got married. Yep. So I, I, I didn't know myself. I'm 41 right now. Mm -hmm. I'm maybe just getting to the point where I might know myself. Wow. Uh, and, and saying that that's a bold statement because, um, you know, we've alluded to some of the, some of the shit you've, you've seen and, and have gone through and done. Um, and to, to come out on the other side of that and say, I'm just starting to kind of get to know myself. Uh, that's a, that's a powerful statement. And I think that sometimes, um, we as men don't even ask ourselves, do we know who each, who, you know, do you know yourself? Isn't that a great question to ask yourself sometime? Like, what makes you tick? What makes you, what makes you you? You know, is it based on the uh, the decisions or the expectations of a whole bunch of other people around you, or have you actually done some of that introspective work to um, to find out some of these things? And it's I find it very interesting that that you go through this divorce and and once the kind of the shock and the and the uh, you know the awfulness kind of washes over you 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 take a completely different turn in life. Um, do you think part of you was stifled in that marriage from being able to do that? Is that is that uh, is that part of it, or was it the fact that you just didn't know who you were and that in itself was creating the discomfort? Completely both. Okay. I mean, growing up, my father was very black and white. Men made the money, women stayed at home. Yep. That was it. Men felt feelings. No, they didn't. <laughs> Denial is not just a big river. <laughs> yeah. Completely. I, I can remember as a young man, my first you know, sort of true love. And I went to my father for advice. I'm like, dad, how, how do you know you're in love? How do you know? And he's like, you'll know or she's pregnant. I'm like, oh, <laughs> well. Wow. <laughs> it was very, he was very, very stern. Some sage advice right there. <laughs> no, no, horrible, horrible <laughs> advice. <laughs> wow. Okay. But I, I started, and I'm very much, I love my father, love him, but he was not very sentimental or careful with his words. He was not kind in that way. You know, he, he did teach a person how to provide yep. and how to work hard yep. and how to provide. And I totally said that twice. Um, but the part of, 
like trying to understand yourself. He never got until maybe six months before he passed away. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did he know he was going to pass away? Like, was it a slow goodbye kind of a thing? Oh, no, it was fast. It was, um, he didn't feel well, went to the doctor, and six months later, he'd gone. It was like a crazy cancer. Okay, but he knew he had cancer. So I guess my point is, what initiated him making that step to take some of these maybe um, uh, these existential type thoughts and to start thinking beyond himself? Was it because he knew he was going to die, and 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 and, and so that created that uh, that kind of crisis in his head? He figured he had six months to go. Yeah. Let it all out. Gotcha. Yeah. And I think, um, I don't know if, I I think we've told you this, you know, the idea that we're trying to take the definition of man up back, the idea of man up, we're trying to take that phrase back. And, and you and I were both raised by, by, by men who, um, I I think a lot of people can relate to what you're talking about. You know, you think of the Bill Burr show F is for family and you think of, uh, of, of, of Bill's character in that show, the screaming, yelling father who comes home from work. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, we're watching mental illness in real time sometimes when, when, uh, when you see that happen, but, but we didn't know that's what it was. We just thought that's what, that's what you did. That's how you acted. And, And I mean, I I've seen, gregarious yelling when I was growing up, you know, on the part of my father. And he's not that guy anymore. Thank goodness. He's done the work, but it's almost like you don't know what you don't know. And I feel like our generation sometimes um, is the one where the light bulb got turned on. So like, you know, you see a lot of these people who are younger than us now, this cancel culture and all these things with these high, high, impossibly high, sometimes standards. And I say impossibly high because you go, they're going into the past and they're, 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 you know, um, criticizing behaviors, but that generation wasn't raised by the generation that we were raised by. They were not. And I, this is one of my favorite stories. And this is the epitome of that generation. So one of my friends had gone to one of the local malls and stolen an ear piercing gun. Oh, okay. Uh, so they stole themselves a business. The Wanted to go into business for themselves? Good for them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just a bunch of young idiots wanting to get an ear in. Mm-hmm. So this friend of mine comes to my basement and he's got this ear piercing gun. He's like, yeah, we're going to do this. We're all, all going to get earrings right now. <laughs> and so... I don't know, there's like six or eight of us, and everybody gets an earring. You know, tick it, tick it, tick it, tick it. It's my turn. I didn't want one. I got one, two, three, seven. Wow. All at once. I'm like, I want two here and two here and two here and one here. I'm like all over the map. And Sounds like, pretty sterile, two- Don. Sounds like you guys took a lot of precautions there. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. Seven. So, yeah, yeah, seven earrings. And my mom's home and she hears all this commotion because by the end of it, like we're giggling because this one friend of mine is just like piercing me anywhere at this point. (laughs) And she comes downstairs and she flips, loses her lid. There's all these young, like we're probably 13 at this time. Wow. And we have all these earrings. Well, everybody has one. I have seven. (laughs) And she's like, I'm getting your father. Uh Oh, Oh, and I'm like, fuck, he's going to be pissed. And he walks down the stairs, like not walks, he stops, gets to the bottom, and he looks at me. I'm probably sitting there like all sheepish and quite quiet and like, oh, is this beating time? He looks at me and he goes, and excuse my language, this is just how the story played out. Sure. He goes, there are only two types of guys that get earrings, pirates and fags. I don't yeah. see a fucking boat. Yep. And he turns around. And he walks up the stairs. <laughs> yep. And, and and you're saying, pardon my language. And if you if you really really talk to a lot of guys in their forties, there's zero surprise to 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 that. Like that's of routine. course. Like I can name three friends who had fathers just like that. Yeah. I I just I I don't like the word fag. Sure. If it's pretty yeah. So absolutely. Anybody, 
watching, listening, just no, I don't condone that word. It's just, it's part of the story. Yep. Um, so anyway, years and years and years go by. And my parents are living in Saudi Arabia. And we Skype, which Skype used to be a thing. Did it not? <laughs> Skype was a thing. Yep. I remember that. It, I know we're on Zoom right now, but Skype was an actual thing for anybody under 30. That's Skype right. was an actual word. That's right. <laughs> So we're Skyping and my mom's all jacked up like a monkey on Malcolm do. Like she's vibrating. She's like, Don, you gotta look at your father. I'm like, oh, okay, what's what's going on? He's, she's just like, just just look at him. Just look at him. And she pans the camera over, and there's my dad. Same thing, like just this cranky gorilla face. And he turns his ear, and he's got this. God awful fucking diamond in his ear. <laughs> Your dad went pirate. Good for him. He did. <laughs> and I'm staring at him and he's <laughs> looking at me and we don't even talk. We, we don't speak. There's not a, anything. I'm looking at him I'm like, did you get a boat? <laughs> that is one of the only times in my entire life that I made that guy laugh. And right. I think I'm like crazy good at making people laugh it's one of my goals in life, even as I try to help people through pretty shitty things. Yeah. I still want to see you smile. It, it's so important. A, a smile is so therapeutic. And I can remember that to this day. Is he just, he smiled. He didn't say a word. Yeah. So. I, I, I think about this and the idea of, of making people laugh, um, especially during like... What's up, and it's all in the eye of the beholder, like you said. Like you gained a lot of perspective working with the people that you did, but the stories you would tell, like at the end of the day, whenever if I'd see you online or whatever, hey, how's your day? Um, you would always have laughter. Like, like there would always be laughter, even with with people in that kind of situation. And that always astounded me. But um, like you, some of these people that you worked with, they were they literally came from real success quote unquote success stories and had massive falls from grace you've seen you've seen all types of people in this scenario it's not just people who were born into it right it's not it's not and mike i was so close um i was at the corner i don't know if if yourself or anybody listening knows edmonton but it was right at the hotel like the Okay. So if you look at the Hotel McDonald's and you look to your left, there's a place called Boyle Street. Okay. It's where the, the homeless people go. They go there to get warm lunches, mittens, needles, anything. Yeah. It's a drop in center. Yep. And if you look right, it goes straight down to the River Valley where there are these multi million dollar homes. And I can remember actually being on that street corner and I'm looking, I'm like, where do I want to go? And weirdly enough, at that time in my life, I chose left. I chose Boyle Street. Mm. I chose to give up everything. And when I mean, or when I say everything, I actually mean everything. I, I gave up everything just to be in that demographic, just to learn it, just to know what it, what somebody else feels like. Like if I feel shitty, who else feels shitty? Why do you feel shitty? Right. And it was, I'm not going to say it was the best thing I've ever done, but man, I learned some stuff. Well, I was just going to say, uh, you know, best thing uh, that that's in the eye of the beholder, an incredible learning experience about yourself. Um, the, the things that you've learned and now you're kind of, you're out of that space and you're kind of reintegrating back in and it's cool like it's 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 really fun listening to you talk to candy and the team about about you know uh how you know consulting on on marketing for he or where he should go and things like that because i can imagine the dawn without those experiences without that five-year uh journey <laughs> learning experience that you went on and 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 you're talking 
you're talking that 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 business speak, that corporate language. You 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 know, uh, you fit in very well with that environment. Except, I also know that you also fit into this other environment. You have this other breadth of experience, plus your own personal experiences, and it's quite it's 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 kind of a mind fuck for me to hear you talk this way. Uh, knowing the world that you were in when I met you, you know what I'm saying? How has, how has reintegration as you've kind of moved away from, from that level of it and are moving kind of back into society, kind of finding yourself, that sort of thing, probably another career change here. I, 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 I see you being a life coach. I know it's been, it's been kind of thrown at you. Um, how is reintegration after, after going through that experience? <laughs> Honestly, amazing. Hmm. It, it's been it's been so so good. Um, I started doing weird things like going out on dates. <laughs> and when I went on dates. It's not like you know, party and drink and uh, have sex. No, like having a walk with a female and speaking yeah. to her and finding out whether I like her. Um, speaking to business people about what they do. I went in very deep on like Facebook and started just asking random people, what do you do? What do you like about it? Right. I I started wanting to learn about other people instead of myself anymore. So I went from very self-centric to very, I want to know about other people now. And I ended up, Oddly enough, meeting this crazy awesome lady after a series of crazy not awesome relationships. <laughs> yeah, we, we we could do an entire podcast, and maybe one day we will. Don can Don can attest to being in some relationships that are uh, well, let's say dysfunctional to say the least. Different, can different, we say yeah, different? very different, different, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I met this lady, and I, I remember this phrase that I said to her, I'll never forget it. And it's one thing that I really, really want other men to hear and listen to. I said, when I met you, I wasn't lonely. I wasn't bored, and I didn't need anything. Mm. And I look back at every one of my past relationships, whether it's friendships, lovers, or even work. I needed work. I needed a physical or emotional relationship. I I needed something. So when I met this person and I said those words, like she doesn't understand how astounding they were to me. I didn't need you. Mm. And that's, that, that's maybe the one thing out of this entire podcast that a person I hope maybe gets is if you don't need something, but you find something awesome, then that is something truly awesome. It's that old adage, you know, if you love something, set it free. If it comes back to you, it's yours. If it doesn't, it never was right. It's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a take on that, except you're looking at it a little bit more, um, more internal, like asking that question, am I with my mate because I want to be, or am I with my mate because they're giving me something that I quote unquote need, you know, and isn't that dysfunction right there? It it is. That is the epitome of dysfunction. I, uh, I appreciate the fact that you are, are so um, open to being able to, uh, to be honest about that and, and, and talk about that. I think there's a lot of guys who are living in relationships that aren't necessarily built on that foundation. It, 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 and I'm not saying that it's impossible to, to create that foundation within. I'm not even close. Of course it is. You do the work, you can get it done. No matter what it is, you put your mind to it, you put the work to it. You, Thousand percent. That, you can, right. Thousand percent. Yeah. But how different is it feeling as you're going into a new relationship where you're able to say, you know what, I don't need you but I want you, I don't need to spend time with you, but you know what? I want to spend time with you. Um, that's gotta be a, that's gotta be a pretty freeing feeling. Brother, I'm 41. I've actually never felt that where I can actually date somebody 
and it, it's the neatest feeling because it, it was always um, based on the way a person grows up, parents, anything else. It's like, you need to do this. As a man, you have certain cards you need to provide. And if you're not going to provide, looking at some of the past history, you're going to be an asshole. So it's like, I don't want to provide. I don't want to be an asshole. Can't I just be Don? Hmm. And the great thing about everything I've been through in the last eight years, it's been roughly eight years, yep. is at, at this point, it's like right now, I just sort of want to be Don. And I wish somebody would have spoken to me about that and said, what, what does Don like, want? You know, are you funny? Hmm. Or do you want to make people laugh? You know, do you want to build an airplane? Take away all these other things. You know, you take away the money, you yep. take away the family, you take away sex, you, you strip a guy down just to himself and go, what do you want? That's a hard fucking question. Yeah. Crazy hard question. And if you can answer that, then you can start building back upon yourself. You know, I, I, I want this for myself and then I want a partner and here's what I want for my partner. And then I want a job. Here's what I want in my job. And you can start building upon yourself. And I know it sounds to a lot of people that have grown up like I did pretty hoity-toity or flighty or some other word that we don't know how to attach to the feeling. Right. But it's a very true statement. If you can trip, strip yourself down and just add pieces to you as you want. You know, I, I, I love, and we've talked a little bit about it. Like, I mean, we've really only scratched the surface with Don's experiences and his stories and stuff, but he's, he's done a little bit of a flavor. He's given it a little bit of a flavor as to, to, to what he's gone through. Um, stripping yourself down like that, asking yourself what you want. The idea of that, you didn't go to a fucking yoga retreat and come out with that knowledge. <laughs> like, like you say, maybe, maybe, maybe on its own, somebody might think that, Oh yeah. Okay. That guy went to a yoga retreat. No, you, you fucking were at the depth of, 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 of rock bottom and then below some where you were considering not even staying on this planet kind of a thing. And then you, oh, Mike, it journey and said, this is what you've come out with it. Um, you know, you've done the heavy lifting and success leaves clues. I talk about this all the time. And and there are guys listening to this. You don't have to go through what Don went through to come with these kinds of, of, of aha moments. Um, you can listen to other guys. And, and that's why I think that you're so powerful and you can help so many people is, is because, you know, you have, you have really stared that bleakness or that blackness in the face and you've come out the other side. And these are some of the lessons that you've come, come out with. And I think authenticity is something that, you know, we use it. It's a, it's a buzzword in our society right now. I think you'd agree compared to when we were growing up or even, even, you know, 10 years ago, authenticity is really a, a, a thing. Um, and, and we got to listen to people who, who become authentic through stories like this. And when you, when you talk about that, that idea of, of going back and saying, hey, who am I? What makes me me? What do I really want? And then you start adding pieces. You know, you just, you realize, oh, I do want a family. So you start adding what you want in that family and what you want to do for it and what you want it to do for you and all that. Um, that's a very powerful exercise. And um, I'm, I, I'm, I was going to say, I'm sad that it took you going through what you went through, but I know I'm not sad because I know you enjoyed every second of going through what you went through. Um, were there moments when you were scared, Don? The most fearful part of my life was when I drove to that little tiny area and man, it was beautiful. It was a park. <laughs> I will remember this forever. The place where you got your wedding photos done. Yep. Yeah. And the sun setting, the park's right in front of me. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm honestly and truly, I'm going to kill myself. Mm-hmm. Like at, at that point, this is just what's going to happen. It's not, this isn't a sad part of the story. This is very factual. So I'm watching the sun setting and it's beautiful. And I, I do that thing. Like I actually put a knife in my wrist and it was no fear. No fear of that at all. Dropped my hand and like totally bled out. The only time where I was super afraid is when I woke up. Mm -hmm. It it didn't work. Weirdly enough, I'm actually not trying to brag, but I'm on the U of A doctor's wall as somebody who shouldn't have made it. Wow. Because I I had done everything right to, to try to commit suicide. Yeah. Everything right. And they were so confused. I'm sitting there talking to them. That's when my fear kicked in. I'm like, okay, well, that didn't work, you know. Mm-hmm. I've done everything right. I actually did research on how to do it, least amount of pain, uh, how to have it happen the fastest. Yeah. So that went through. So the fear is when no matter what you plan doesn't work out, then what? And I love that question. Then what? Now what? What next? Because so many of us don't know because we have these things that happen to us. And it it doesn't need to be like, obviously, hopefully for anybody out there listening, it doesn't need to be what I went through. Mm -hmm. But it could be divorce. It could be, it could be something like your wife loses a child without being born. Yeah. That's devastating. Yeah. And then what? Like, where do you go now? Like, take all the bad things you like, put them into one little, one little bowl, and then say, and then what? Right. And the, and then what? That's the beautiful part. So it doesn't have to take all the bad shit. And then what? There's something better. There has to be something better. Well, and that's the, uh, you know, that's the thing that we, you know, we, well, we, we all know why he changed it as being built. There's a, there's a crisis when it comes to men's mental health out there. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, some, some of these, some of these shows that we do or some of the tools and the resources that you can get from he are, are uplifting and powerful and they move you forward. And some of them are, um, are, are, are preparations or tools for when, things aren't going so well. And, and the idea, like we're talking to a guy right now who um, almost made a permanent decision in a temporary situation and um, is on the other side right now, able to say fully and completely, I'm so fucking glad it didn't work out. (laughs) I'm I'm so fucking glad it didn't, you know, that's that as far as plan, uh, you know, plans going, not going the way that you want them to go. That's probably the one that you're, you're probably the most glad about that. It didn't go the way you wanted it to go. And, and, and I guess we're going to move towards closing up now. Um, I can't wait to spend time with you in He Changed It. There's a whole bunch of things coming up now where 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 He Cast is going to finally have its own kind of place and people can go there and, and, and guests can go there and we can all kind of hang out and talk and stuff. Um, so this is definitely a to-be-continued type situation. But But at the end of the day, like, I mean, you were feeling the way that you were and it was temporary. And the journey that you went on afterwards shows how temporary it was, where you got to know yourself and, 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 and whatnot. If you could go back to that Don, who was thinking about making that decision, and you could say that, say something to him. And I know you've said the same words to different people throughout your lives and all, but I'm thinking you per, per, personally, Don, if you could go back into that car, looking at that beautiful sunset and you could talk to that dude and you'd be guaranteed that he would listen to you. What would you say? Yeah. 
here is, you got me about a month ago. And the honest words that I would say, he changed it. Because who is he? He is you. He is us. He is reaching out. He is learning from stories from other guys who have been there, done that. No bueno. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't go there. Listen to me. Talk to me. If, you, if you're feeling that way, if you're going down that pretty shitty road, yeah. talk to somebody. Reach out. I didn't think anybody in the world could ever understand what I was going through. The weird thing is, a lot of, a lot of people understand or understood what I was going through, but they weren't reaching out either. And here's why I love he, because this is people reaching out saying, you know what, full disclosure, I was horribly weak. You want to hear the shittiest stories ever? I'll tell you. I'll tell you because I want you to not have those shitty stories. Yeah. I want you to not do what I did. I want you to smile a little bit more. I want you to laugh a little bit harder. I want you to love exponentially more than I did. Did you love yourself back then? Nope. Do you love yourself now? Completely. Yeah. And it took a journey for you to get there. Um, it did, and it shouldn't be alone. Mike, I took mine alone. I met you much, much after all this stuff. Yes. And I do have to say, like, high fives, pat on the back. You're one of the most amazing people I've ever met. Yeah. Um, but we shouldn't have to do it. And I don't want people to, which is why I've changed sort of the people that I'm speaking to now. Yeah. I, uh, I really appreciate you saying um, those things and, and, and the sentiment is exactly true. And, and, uh, you know, it's funny, I'm going to, I'm going to lighten it up considerably now just because we are moving towards the end. And I mean, we can get into this stuff um, again at another time, but uh, I just appreciate you sharing the way that you have, you know, um, you alluded to the, something that reminded me. So, so a couple of weeks ago, I'm in a meeting uh, with Candy and uh, an owner of a hockey team and a junior hockey team. And we we're talking about getting this league involved with, he changed it. And there's all sorts of fun stuff. Like I say, there's stuff, fun stuff happening in the background, everybody. There's some good stuff, but anyway, he, this is this guy, he, he is all on board with what we're doing. And, and he goes, um, we need to figure out a way to help guys when they're in hot water and they haven't been before. And that was his, his shorthand for it was hot water. And, and he talked about how he had a mentor growing up and, um, and his mentor and in this guy, he went through a divorce, this owner of the hockey team, he went through a divorce and um, the mentor was amazing at how he handled it because to him at that moment, when he realized he was going through this divorce, it was like the Indiana Jones fucking boulder coming at him. Like it was just <laughs> insurmountable, right? It was, it was like, are you kidding? Well, a little bit of planet coming down on him. And the mentor looked at him and said, so what? I've been through one. This guy, he's been through one. That guy, he's been through one. We'll help you. You get it on the other side. And he said it completely changed in one conversation, completely reframed his entire fucking perspective. And those guys that had gone through shit of their own, they'd gone through hot water of their own. And so this is what the, the gentleman said to said to, to Candy and her team is you, you got to be able to help provide guys perspective when they're in hot water. When they've done something they shouldn't have done or they feel uh, they said something they shouldn't have said or going through something they don't want to be going through, there's nothing new under the sun. And when you're talking about how you went through it alone and how you can literally shorthand it for people, somebody who's in that moment right now, you can provide perspective that will make them stop feeling the way they're feeling and realize it does get better. And we just need to fucking be there for each other when we're in hot water. You know what I'm saying? Brother, as far as I'm concerned, our entire lives are like a circus. 
the, it's it's intense. Yeah, intense. That's a, a play on words. <laughs> you could have laughed a little bit harder. Brutal. <laughs> I'm la- no, no. It was that, that was. <laughs> it is. You're right. It's true though. And, it, it, it is. And honestly, the only thing I want to see out of anybody else is a smile. Yeah. I, I, I know I come across as dry and boring, but I want to see people smile. And you do that now. And it's amazing to see that. And it's amazing how, again, when you were working with these people, how you would make them smile and you would brighten up days. Um, <laughs> as, as we, as we kind of close up a little bit here, um, do you have any words of any last kind of words of advice uh, for people who are in that hot water and what they're going through and, and, and how they might um, change the way they think a little bit. So they change their outlook on life. Cause I mean, your outlook has changed. I've, even since I've met you, I've watched your outlook change and I've watched you evolve. And it's amazing to see that. Um, any other clues you want to leave before we, uh, before we finish it up? If you're in hot water, don't be ashamed. Get out of the fucking tub, be naked, walk around. Oh yeah. There you go. Like, if you're in hot water, you are ashamed. Yeah. The hot water is your tub. Just, Get out. Yeah. That's all. I love it. I love it so much because so many times, uh, you know, the stats, again, I listen to these stats that, 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 that Candy and the team come up, uh, come up with. And it's like astounding how, how guys, they will go and make these decisions and whatnot because they don't want to be a bother to anybody, not realizing <laughs> that the decision is the bother, but it's because of shame, you know, and, and uh, hey, there you go. If there is one thing about you that I would say is is something that I really look up to, and I should have said this in the intro, it's the idea that I'm not going to say you don't have shame, but I am going to say that you are really good at faking it till you make it if you do feel shame. You're really <laughs> good at, at, at being your authentic self no matter, no matter what the truth is. And I really appreciate that about you. And I will always give you the truth, brother. Um. Don, I appreciate this uh, beyond everything. Like I said earlier, I, 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 I'm grateful that you agreed to do this. This isn't exactly your, your wheelhouse when it comes to what you do now and that, that sort of thing. You like to live life rather than kind of report on it. But at the end of the day... Um, However, I mean, I am also moving into something new. I'm becoming a life coach. I'm yeah. moving away from the addiction side. I'm, I want to help I want to help men. I want, I want to help men who are going through pretty shitty times. This is my entire focus over the next six months is just to become a life coach. And I know if I would have heard that term 20 years ago, I'd have been like, <laughs> what's that guy smoking? Yeah. Hey, what do you think our dads would have said about uh, us wanting to be a life coach? You know, 14-year-old Don running in with his his seven fucking earrings in his ear, (laughs) turning to your dad. Hey, dad, I'm going to be a life coach. I probably would have got the exact same phrase. (laughs) He would have said, well, I guess you're not a pirate. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Um, my man, I, I just thank you for taking time out of your day. And as you move down this journey, um, uh, you know, you, there's going to be a place for you to, 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 to use your gifts. And regardless if you were becoming a coach or not, I'd be, I'd be asking you on both knees if you could be part of he and in the community as the community starts to develop itself out. Um, you're a hell of a guy. I appreciate you. And uh, I just want to say thank you for being vulnerable today and being, you're vulnerable every day, but thank you for doing it on camera. And 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 um, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. And if there's anybody out there who is, uh, you know what? And Don's, hey, we didn't we didn't rehearse this at all. If there's anybody out there listening to this and you feel like you might be uh, near the end of a rope or two, Don, how's the, what's the best way for somebody to get a hold of you? Uh, D J B R E T E C H E R at gmail.com. I will respond to anybody. Um, no charge, nothing. No, no. If, yeah. if you're stuck there, if you are actually stuck there and 
take a minute to email. The, the one beautiful thing about email, you're going to have to think about it. You're going to have to write down the email address. You're going to have to write down what you think. Yeah. You're taking a second away from whatever you're thinking. Yeah. I will get back to you. Re- uh, repeat the counselor. email address, Don. What's that? Repeat the email address, please. D J B R E T E C H E R at gmail.com. That's awesome, man. It's, and I'm not, it's and, not and a by the way, everybody, site. I, go ahead. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying it's not a professional site. It's nothing. If you need something and you're afraid to go to a professional site, come to me. I will just chat. I might refer you on. I might not. But take a moment to actually write down an email, write down your thoughts. Those couple moments of reflection could save a lot of heartbreak. Yeah, man. I, uh, I appreciate that. And like I say, we didn't talk about that in the past. That's just the type of guy Don is. Don would help anybody going through something. He's just, he's just that guy. And uh, I'm so grateful that you are going to be part of the He Changed It community as it develops, as it evolves. Thank you for helping be a guiding light. Um, your, your, your perspective is um, it's invaluable. It really, really is because you've seen, you've seen a lot of things that I haven't seen. And um, you're able to give uh, uh, advice and counsel as this thing is being built with, with a tremendous amount of thoughtfulness, but also experience. So thank you for sharing that, Don. Thank you for not just going through what you've gone through and, and not being willing to share this with other people. Like your vulnerability is through the roof. We couldn't get through a podcast without using that V word. We always talk about vulnerability. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much for having that skill uh, so readily available. Thank you so much, Don. My pleasure completely, and I believe in everything he's doing. Mm. And there's only two words I have left. Peace, fuckers! (laughs) My man. Um, There it is. Somebody's going to laugh. No, no, no. There it is. That's it. No, that's it. You're done. That's it. That's the perfect. That's a mic drop right there, buddy. Um, that's uh, that's my buddy, Don. And uh, I just am so grateful that he is willing to take time and talk about a little bit about what he's been through. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm just grateful that we have a platform for this kind of stuff where we can do this and um, we can listen to interesting people with interesting stories. We can learn interesting things, insights, and and sometimes we can learn some ones that are life changing. And you know what? Every once in a while, we learn something that's life saving. And that's what Don is all about. And I'm really grateful that he was our guest today and he, he allowed me to exploit our friendship so he could uh, he could come out here and, 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 and tell his story. It won't be the last time. Uh, we are just scratching the surface with him. But at the end of the day, we are out of time. That is another episode of He Cast in the Can. I am so excited for the future. I'm so excited for, but I'm also excited for the present. I'm excited where we are right now. We're really enjoying the journey. Again, uh, if you want to subscribe or share the podcast, we would really appreciate that. Uh, the faster the traction goes, the, the bigger we can build this thing faster. So um, if you haven't downloaded, he changed it. It's in both the app stores. Go for it. Sign on up. And uh, until the next time, for he cast the official podcast of He Changed It, my name is Mike Chisholm. Go change something.